Science, as you all remember from the chalkboard in grade school or wherever you first encountered it, is a method. That method has one value, and then it has a lot of costs. And the argument of anybody who believes in the method is that the costs are worth paying in order to get the value. The value is that it corrects for human biases. And what that means is that if you think something is true and you run a proper scientific experiment, you will discover whether or not you were correct. So to the extent that you are biased as it's true, you will discover it's false if it's false, if, if, you do, if you apply the method correctly. But the method actually has deep philosophical underpinnings. And the philosophical underpinnings basically require, you will remember the method is, you observe a pattern, you hypothesize an explanation for the pattern, the hypothesis makes predictions about what else would be true if the hypothesis was correct, and then you run an experiment to see whether the predictions show up in some place that you look for them. Um, then, the part that doesn't frequently get said is if the test turns out to reflect positively on the hypothesis, if the predictions are right, then the model that generated it gains strength in our belief in it. And so, um, Basically, there are a lot of ways this can go wrong. We've seen the replication crisis take down entire fields who have generated a whole library of beliefs that aren't true because there are ways that you can apply the method badly and what you do looks like science, but it doesn't function like it. It doesn't correct for biases. It reinforces them. Especially in an era of really complicated statistics where most of the scientists doing analyses don't actually understand what the math is behind the statistics that they're using are. So they're black boxing whole pieces of their research, being pleasantly surprised when out pops the outcome they were hoping for and they don't ask too many questions. So the upshot of this is the method is incredibly sensitive to whether the people deploying it are actually going through the motions, in which case it won't work, or working hard to discover their own biases by applying this method um, to the the patterns in question. And so hypothesis driven is, uh, I would argue, it's the um, final, it's the ultimate discovery about how science needs to work. Do we need to tinker the methods and the assumptions to get it to work a little better? Yes. But if aliens step off the spaceship someday and say, we'd like to talk, they will have a version of the scientific method and we will be able to map our version onto theirs. Maybe an interesting discussion to be had, but they will be hypothesis testing. They will be falsifying hypotheses rather than validating them. They will do all the same things. Why? Because it works and you can't expect anything to replace it. That's so right. um, I expect you'll then go to its challengers. Yeah. So uh, just to pick up your example, those aliens are not going to have gotten to Earth by using data-driven science. And I always want to put science in scare quotes when it follows data-driven, right? Uh, it's what uh, modelers and data scientists uh, tend to be pushing in this era of big data where... Um, where we have so many numbers generated at all moments of every day that can then be queried for what it is that they might mean by our supercomputing powers, um, that it seems like asking the numbers that already exist for the patterns within them uh, must be a fine and maybe even a better replacement for hypothesis-driven science, but, but it's not, right? Data-driven science uh, is asking data to reveal, reveal patterns that you did not predict. And therefore, what you get out of such queries is a hypothesis. It is not a result. It is often treated like it's a result. And this is how data-driven science actually you know, makes, makes its living. It queries, it queries data, says, what do you see? And then whatever is seen ends up being promoted as this is what we found. And it, it is a kind of found, but it's found that hasn't been tested yet. That is effectively an observation, which is something you've said here before, right? So if you query data uh, using an algorithm and you end up with, oh, I think this pattern, 
this pattern has revealed itself. Now what you need to do is go with that hypothesis that there's a pattern that exists into a different data set and ask those data if this pattern exists. So I think this is going to be very mysterious to people until we unpack it a little bit. Okay. First, data driven. When people say it, when they assert this is data driven science, let's see what the data say, the data are king, right? When people do that, it sounds to somebody who has not been in the trenches like an obvious appeal to the empirical, right? Oh, all, all that is almost synonymous. If I say data-driven science, I'm really just saying science with some kind of emphasis on the empirical. This is not what it is at all. It's actually a kind of coup from- Empirical the, meaning the countable, the quantifiable. Yeah, the quantifiable and very often the, uh, the experimental. Um, and we are not arguing against experiment or empiricism. In fact, it is absolutely essential for hypothesis-driven science to be tested against the empirical. That's what makes it work. Mm -hmm. But if you sideline the hypothetical and you simply go to a series of experiments, what you are doing is you are taking all of the parts of the method that aren't observation and eliminating them, which then fails to account for bias. Now the one, or to correct for bias, the one caveat that I would make, and people like you and me hate this point, just Good. absolutely Can't detest wait. it. Hypothesis-driven science could be done by a machine, okay? It could be done by a machine on giant data sets, and it would work. Now, I don't think it would be artful. I don't think we're in a place right. to do it, but I don't want to say that this requires people to generate hypotheses. It could be done in a um, in a mechanistic, algorithmic way. It could, although many of the you know famously many of the sort of big name early twentieth century scientists like like Einstein and others are on record saying things like, and I don't I don't have any of the quotes on hand, but um, you know we we do our science with logic, but we invent. The, the generation of hypothesis is invention, it's creativity, it's dream space. You know, it's, it's something that you can't teach, that you get experience in by going out into the world and looking for patterns and trying to explain them. And the, the you know, sort of rinse, repeat, you know, wash, rinse, repeat part in which you're testing your hypotheses, having generated predictions that necessarily follow from them, and then doing experiments or careful observations to assess whether or not they're true and doing the analysis and going in a circle there uh, can be taught and people get better at it over time. But the, where did the idea come from is uh, more ineffable. And yes, you could teach machines to do some of those things, um, but Many people who actually generate hypotheses, yourself included, myself included, uh, will, I think, still hold on to the idea that humans yet, at least with the kind of AI we have now, are better, are going to be better at generating uh, new explanations for patterns uh, in complex systems. Yes. Um at the moment, humans have a huge advantage in the creative part of this endeavor, which we underemphasize. You know, people don't understand how much of really high quality science is dependent on the creative process in the, what would be called the theoretical part of the endeavor. The theoretical part does not, however, generate theory. It generates hypotheses, which can mature into theories if they're right, and that shows up in experiment. But in any case, this is probably more than you need to know. The key thing to understand is that when somebody decides to take a shortcut, they are always taking a shortcut in the direction of empiricism, and that empiricism on its own is prone to all the errors that science is a cure for. In other words, it reflects the biases of those uh, making the shortcut, and that is in effect what we seem to have found in this case. Is so I was just going to say, what is it? What is it that we have here? Are they doing hypothesis-driven science, data-driven science, neither of the above? Uh, sort of sounds like they are pretending to do data-driven science. Yep. They are uh, accidentally acknowledging that they are not doing hypothetical deductive science. Mm -hmm. um, but in fact, it doesn't look like high-quality data-driven either. It's not even data-driven, right? It seems, and you know, this is, I don't know that anyone else is calling it this, but uh, the, the three-part solution set that I was thinking of in watching this video was, well, it's clearly not hypothesis-driven. They clearly, 
I'm not sure they would recognize a hypothesis if it hit them in the head, but they seem to have facility and really like the idea of data, but this looks like it's conclusion driven. They have a conclusion they like, they're fitting what they find at that conclusion no matter what, excluding stuff that doesn't fit, uh, talking about the things that does fit. That is actively anti-scientific. It, it couldn't really be farther from an actual scientific approach.